Well, how about this Ammonia Sosa guy? <laughs> going on everybody welcome to Phillies Hats of Media and Jury Captain tonight's give me to the fifth of Phillies and the Miami Marlins as the Phillies defeat the Marlins by a final score of four to three as they have now taken the first two games of this three game series and now have secured at least a series win as they are looking to sweep the series tomorrow night at 645. Now guess before we get into this video please subscribe if you have not yet please share your bell please like this video comment on this video share this video and let's get into this uh, so Ammonia Sosa with three RBIs tonight, going deep, back-to-back -back nights, his second round tripper of the season, uh, his 11th double of the season tonight as well. He's been a big key into the Philly success in this series, as Bryson Stott got the night off again tonight. Uh, as I did mention in the recap last night, I'm like, I think Ammonia Sosa will be driving into, uh, the ballpark tomorrow, not expecting to be in the lineup, but sure enough, I was wrong. Uh, sure enough, I was wrong as he hit ninth tonight. Uh, and uh, my goodness gracious, he certainly had an impact indeed. Uh, so as I did mention, uh, another double tonight, another home run. Uh, and uh, also collecting a single three RBIs uh, for Sosa. Uh, by far your most productive Phillies player tonight. I mean, Bailey Falter with another great start. Uh, I love what this guy has done. He's been super underrated. He certainly has come up big in the clutch, right? I mean, no question about it. We really need a lot out of this guy, and he certainly has provided. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, Michael Barham brought this up in the post game, and I totally agree uh, that uh, when Zach Weaver does come back, I think it's very important that Bailey Falter still gets starts. Uh, because, you know, he's giving you better numbers than what Ranger Suarez has been giving you the last, you know, three or four starts. Uh, you know, he's not losing in the, in the third or fourth inning. Uh, you know, he's going pretty strong. I mean, certainly he doesn't go very deep, but that's okay. Uh, we don't need a whole lot of length out of a guy like Bale Falter. We need a lot of length out of guys like Zach Lee or Aaron Nola, uh, you know, guys like that. Kyle Gibson, a uh, decent amount of length out of guys like that. Uh, you know, even though Syndergaard to a certain degree, a guy who, you know, is, doesn't really, he's supposed to not throw a lot of pitches now that he's more of a pitch to contact out guy. As we can be scoring something here in the top of the first inning, Joey Wendell grounds into a force out, uh, as, uh, Charles Lindback comes around to score, uh, and the Marlins now lead it one to nothing. Uh, so they were able to get Garcia out at second, but Wendell was able to beat out the throw. So not the end of the world. It wasn't a you know solo shot. It wasn't an RBI double. Uh, this was a fielder's choice RBI. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, the Phillies were trailing in this ball game one to nothing. Uh, so I was a little bit annoyed about that one, and I wasn't sure how we were going to do here. Trevor Rogers, a guy that uh, could be uh, on or off. The past few years that we've seen since 2019, the Phillies have struggled to hit at the Marlins pitching consistently. Uh, so that was kind of a concern of mine. I mean, I think understandably. And let me pick it up here in the bottom of the third inning. He is the man. I literally starting to like this Amenia Sosa guy. Uh, you know, what a return from a guy like Jojo Romero. A uh, guy coming off TJ, and he, you know who knows what he was going to be like. Uh, and uh, this was a steal from the St. Louis Cardinals. This was an absolute steal. As Emilio Sosa homers on a fly ball to left center field, a two-run shot also scores Veiling. Sosa's second of the year, uh, second back-to-back -back nights, uh, and the Phillies now take a two-to-one lead. Uh, so how about this? This isn't from a guy like Kyle Schwarber. This isn't from a guy like Bryce Harper. This isn't from a guy like Reese Hoskins. This is from a complimentary player. And I'm going to keep reverting back to that statement because that is the statement that the president of baseball operations of the Philadelphia Phillies said in his uh, season recap press conference last year. We don't have enough complimentary players. Well, that certainly seems to have changed this year. Uh, so we certainly done much better in that department. Certainly we saw guys that last year that stepped up in a big way that didn't really have, you know, you know, big roles, uh, you know, for the Phillies. Guys like Ronald Torres, even Travis Gronkowski in a way. Uh, but uh, this has certainly been a big, big uh, plus. Certainly when we're, you know, in the true hunt of it, because last year we really worked. Uh, we were in the hunt for the division, not the wild card. Uh, division, you know, clearly is just way out of the picture, right? With the Braves and uh, Mets just up at the top, you know, fighting over that, that first place spot. Uh, I, I was hell-bent on the Mets for a little while there. I don't know. I mean, uh, the Mets have a very easy schedule in you know, the next couple weeks. Uh, but uh, the Braves, man, they just have a flair for the dramatic. They are built for this time of year. And the Mets, I'm not sure if they are. I, I think they are, but, uh, you know, Max Scherzer now landing on the out. I think it's questionable. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let me pick it up here in the bottom fourth inning. The hero in last night's ball game, Gene Segura. Uh, you know, certainly showing a lot of emotion last night. I love to see that. 
Uh, as he was 95 ball, two left field, is ninth of the season, and it's now three to one Philadelphia. So uh, another nice run attack on right there. Uh, you know, an inning after the Ammonio Sosa two run shot. Uh, so I, I love it, man. I just love it. I mean, this is a team that uh, really hasn't done so well in the home run department uh, for the second half of the season. Uh, Reese Hoskins has been very quiet with the home runs. Uh, Kyle Schwarber has clearly been quiet with the home runs. Bryce Harper has been homerless since his return off of the IL. Uh, you know, JT Muto has done a pretty decent job with that department, but uh, the home run guys haven't really been there. I mean, Nick Hostianos all season long. Hasn't been there. If he was in the lineup the next, you know, the past few days, he still would be hitting home runs because that's what he's been doing this year. He's been hitting little singles out to right field. Uh, so that's what he's been doing. Uh, so a nice two-run lead for the Phillies. We pick it up here in the top of the fifth inning. Charles Limbach singles on a little dunk fly ball to right field. Brian De La Cruz comes around the score, and it's now just a one-run ball game, three to two Phillies. Uh, so that was just kind of unfortunate. Ball that just happened to fall in there. Uh, it wasn't hit hard at all. Uh, I, hate, I hate when that kind of stuff happens. You know what I mean? I know that uh, that really, really rattled Bailey Falter. I mean, Matt Fierling wasn't too happy about that one either as he got the start on right field tonight. And pick it up here in the bottom of the seventh inning. He does it again as Amunio Sotz. It's a ground ball uh, off of uh, Barzendon's uh, glove. And it's not handled cleanly by Lee back at second. The ball goes into right field. Matt Fierling cruises home, man. He was really hustling. And Sosa moves up to second. Uh, that was one of the weirdest doubles I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so that was his 11th of the season. Uh, and the Phillies now get a nice insurance run as they get the run back. Now a 4-2 ball game. Uh, so that was just huge, right? I mean, he, this guy, we would have lost tonight if it wasn't for Ammonio Sosa in a lot of places. Think about that for a second. And we've been able to sit Bryce and Stott, a guy that's been pretty much been playing every day since early June the past three days. We had the off day on Monday. Uh, as I said, he did sit Tuesday night, sat Wednesday night. So this has just been huge. Uh, for a guy like Bryce Stott to get some rest. I mean, no question about that. Uh, and uh, the guy that's been taking the spot has really been, you know, carrying the load, that's for sure. Now we pick it up here in the top of the ninth inning. Jacob Stallings, homers on the fly ball, two left field off of Connor Brogdon. His fourth of the season. Luckily, it was a solo blast. And it's that 4-3 to three ball game. Uh, so, that, as I said, that insurance one really proved to be uh, a big uh, factor. Uh, as that would be your final. 4-3 to three fills as they take the first two games of this three-game series. Please sweep tomorrow. Please sweep tomorrow. Please cancel out that awful, this treacherous series in San Fran uh, that we'd like to forget about. And uh, Kyle Schroeder, I lay out Hey, listen, farms. I'm tired of this guy. I, I, I'll be honest. Stop hitting him lead off. Uh, stop hitting him lead off. Rob Thompson, I mean, like, stop it. Uh, I'm tired of this. Uh, he's, he's not doing anything. First of all, now he's not doing anything. He's not even walking. If he was like, you know, going up for two, you know, two walks, you know, and almost every now and then, like, hey, you know, maybe you know, it's okay to keep him there. He's getting on base. He's not getting on base. You know what I mean? Like, why does he keep hitting him there? You know, two strikeouts tonight. He's just, he just looks terrible at the plate. He looks terrible. Wouldn't be surprised if maybe he's battling something. A uh, 791 up he has, and this keeps getting lower and lower and lower. Uh, I, I just, like, what is wrong with this guy? He, he's just been terrible. And uh, Reese Hoskins also collecting a knock tonight. It was his 27th double of the season. Uh, and uh, also going down on strikes one. Alcum gets a start at third and collects a single tonight. Also going down on strikes once as well. Uh, and uh, Bryce Harper. Uh, it was a performance tonight where he was able to draw a walk. He does not look good. Uh, as he also went down on strikes twice, tweaked himself on a swing. He won't be in the lineup tomorrow. Uh, I wouldn't put him in the lineup tomorrow. There's no reason to put him in the lineup tomorrow. Uh, when you have other guys stepping up and doing their job, uh, you know, we already have secured a series win. Uh, sit him. Uh, sit him. I would not put him in uh, just for precautionary reasons. And think about it. He's even been back for two weeks yet. Uh, so I would not play Bryce Harper in the lineup tomorrow if, if I was Rob Thompson. Uh, so he did tweak himself on the swing. I mean, not 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 good. Uh, he looked to be in some discomfort there. Uh, JT Muto with a rough hit with performances. He uh, strikes out three times. And Segura only one hit was a big one. The home run the left field. I mean, that was a towering home run uh, that barely even stayed fair. I mean, that ball was a wall scraper at its finest. Uh, but a home run is a home run. And Matt Fearling, two knocks tonight out in right field. Uh, he certainly had a good night. I mean, uh, collecting a double and a single, also scoring two of the fills, four runs. And uh, Brandon Marsh gets to start out in center, and goes hit with and also goes down and strikes once as well. Uh, so uh, this is a guy that actually had a pretty good series in Arizona last week, but that was like honestly like the best spurt I've seen of him in a Phillies uniform, and we haven't seen really a glimpse of it since. Uh, and uh, Munoz Sosa, your Phillies has to media player of the game. Three knocks, the single, the home run, the double. Uh, this guy has just been incredible. I mean, he's been the hero, man. I mean, he's been the big name in town. 
so how about that? Uh, so a 232 average for Sosa going along with 20 RBIs, two home runs, and a uh, 654 RPS. Uh, so this guy certainly in his career uh, has been no slouch at the plate, as we did see last year with St. Louis. Uh, six home runs, 27 RBI, a 271 average, to going on with a 735 OPS. So it's really not all that surprising. Uh, you know, he's proven he could hit before. Uh, so uh, Bailey Falter, five and a third, seven hits, two runs, all to earn, didn't walk anybody and struck out three. I mean, he gets the job done. Uh, he's not trying to pitch around these guys. He's not trying to uh, – just he just he gets the job done. I, I enjoy watching him pitch. I really, really do. Uh, so he 4-2 a year rate for Falter. Gets to win 4-3 and three now in the year. I mean, he's really just been – uh, just such a great guy coming out of this starting rotation. And thank God we have Bailey Falter. Uh, my goodness gracious, he has just been so wonderful uh, coming out of this rotation. Uh, really. I mean, he's got a guy you can count on. I can't believe he's even saying that. I mean, this is a guy that was getting uh, sent up and down between AAA, uh, you know, during his opener starts just to get extra innings down there. Uh, now he's, you know, up here for good, at least as of ne for now, uh, with the Zach Lear and she has a dimension. I mean, this is a guy that has to stay in there. When Zach Lear comes back. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it just it has to happen. And Jablotti, an in, in inning and two-thirds, one hit, and uh, collects three strikeouts. Very productive uh, appearance for him. A 3-5-0 ERA. And Jose Alvarado uh, loves his ERA down down below the four mark. I mean, he's been wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, nice inning and a strikeout today. A 3-9-2 ERA. Uh, I just am in disbelief. 63 strikeouts. 1-4-3 whip. 41 and a third innings pitched. Uh, so he's, he's been one of our best relievers over the last few months. No question about that. And Connor Brogdon, a little iffy there, allowing the home run to Stallings. Uh, but uh, luckily he was able to get out of it. Uh, an inning, two hits, one run, run was earned. Obviously was the home run. Uh, and also was able to collect a strikeout. So the Phillies win the first two games in this three-game series over this Marlins team. We have done very well against them this year. Uh, finally, uh, it's about time. It is about time. Uh, so I do want to talk a little bit about the drama around the NL East, right? Max Scherzer was placed on the 10-day injured list, but a lot of people do speculate uh, that is just uh, so they could skip one of his starts so they can uh, fill a roster spot. So he's supposed to start on Friday against the Marlins. Uh, so now he is on the IL, and he, you know, of course, did exit his last start with some discomfort. Uh, but unfortunately, the Mets did sweep the Pirates today in a doubleheader. Uh, but the Red Hot Braves have won seven in a row, seven and three in their last ten, as they are now just half a game back from the Mets. Uh, so I think it's a toss-up. Uh, but the Mets, uh, unfortunately, do have a very easy schedule. I'm just going to be honest, because I think people like transparency. I would much rather see the Braves win this division than the Mets. I mean, clearly. I mean, I, I, I am pulling for the Braves over the Mets any day of the week. I, I cannot stand the Mets. Uh, I, I just want to see them crash and burn. I'm sorry. I, you know what? This is a rivalry. Uh, I can't stand New York. I, I want to see them lose. And I in no way like the Braves. You all know that. Uh, but <laughs> I'd much rather see the Braves uh, win over the Mets any day of the week. Uh, so, uh, you know, no question about that. I think it's good I put it out there. Uh, I really hope the Mets crash and burn. I really, really do. Uh, and uh, they certainly have been playing the best of baseball. Every team goes through a rough patch. I mean, of course, they did lose two out of three to Washington this past weekend. They had a rough loss in the first game against the Pirates, but I really don't think it's anything too significant for them. I mean, as I said, good teams lose. They go through tough times. It's not really anything too surprising, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, you know, it's just it's just the, you know the ebbs and flows of a baseball season. Uh, everybody goes through it. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I, I really just do not know who won this division. Of course, I did say the Mets for a while, but I don't know. I, I think I think it's a toss up. So just some little takeaways. Uh, I, I'm sick of Kyle Schwarber. You all know that I've had his back all season long, uh, but uh, I'm tired of this. He's not even walking. He's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. MVP has been terrible over the last few weeks. Absolutely dreadful. He's doing pretty much nothing right. Of course, he did make some. I mean, we flashed a letter tonight. Reese Hoskins, Kyle Schwarber. Uh, we kind of flashed a letter tonight. Uh, but uh, we're paying him to, you know, walk and, you know, hit home runs. Not for, really for his defense, right? The guy that is not known for being a good defender. So, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please share your bell. Please like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Check out the social media. Link in the description section. And Philly Science of Media Instagram. TikTok for Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. At Piazza Media. Car text 267-225-3292. Email me. Philly's Hots of Media. Gmail.com. 645. The first pitch tomorrow night. Alcondra and Gibson. Please get a sleep. This is certainly not going to be easy. I'm Luke and I'll talk to you. Let's go, Phil. So see you guys.